Yo, what is going on guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new Locals feature match. Here we are in round one where we have Marincess on the left and Sprite on the right. Not me playing the Marincess deck as I'm currently piling Photon Galaxy. You guys should see the first episode of One Deck One Month probably coming this Saturday. If not this Saturday, probably sometime the following week. So let's go ahead and hop right into this match here. We are going to see my friend Colin actually on the right here, starting with the Nimble Beaver. And that is going to bring out a copy of Nimble Angler. And I should also mention our player on the right, Devin. He is on the Marincess deck, and he's been on it for a couple weeks now. Prior to that, though, was playing exclusively Tier Limit. So I got to give him props for... Switching over to what was really the better deck all along, wink wink. Um, but either way, we're going to see him go into Gigantic. He'll attempt Gigantic Effect. It's going to get slapped by an Impermanence, as you would expect. And we're going to see him summon Sprite Blue to continue to extend here. And in hand for our Marincess player, I'm seeing Dive, Battle Ocean, Cyanet Mining, and Ghost Spell and Haunted Mansion. I feel like the Ghost Spell is going to put in probably next to zero work here. Elf was normally the best thing to Bell. I guess you could argue it still does stop Toad trying to negate a monster effect. So that is one thing you could have potentially going, you know, for that Bell right now. But or yeah, no, I was gonna say you can't stop the the graveyard effect of Anglers. It summons from deck. So speaking of Angler, this one is going to resolve. It's gonna bring out the remaining two copies of Beaver from the deck, and we'll see what he's going to make now. I know the current builds of Sprite are opting to play Bujinki Ahashima because, you know, a lot of your monsters, if not all of your monsters in the deck, end up being the same level, but we'll see him just go for a copy of IP Mascarena. And I think that's so cool, by the way, because uh, Ahashima is a card I've played in various other rogue decks over the years, like Photon Galaxy, as you guys will see or have seen. I used to play it in Mermail, so it's very cool uh, that it's found its way into Sprite. Um, post elf ban because I think it's it's like it's like elf at home kind of that makes any sense and speaking of Ahashima I believe it's getting banished now off of prosperity as it looks like he probably won't need it this game if he opened sw access to swap frog or you know could have got access to swap frog in some way shape or form I'm sure he would have gone for it you know summoning a swap from grave and summoning a swap from hand off the Ahashima to get into toad we're gonna see him prosperity into, I think that was a Jet Smashers and Nibiru, and it looks like he will take the Nibiru there. I think Nibiru in hand blind right now is sometimes a good bet. It really depends. I mean, with our locals, there's a decent amount of Cash Jira. I would say it's definitely one of the more represented decks next to Branded Despia. We usually have about 40 plus players, ranging anywhere from maybe 5 or so um cash Jira players which i'm not sure what that is percentage wise i want to say eight percent right because five goes into 48 times yeah i think yeah i think that makes sense yeah so we will see that bell get some value here and it's going to be just discard fodder essentially for her sign up mining and it will grab a copy of blue tang it looks like the draw for turn was a copy of Pascalis, I, as long as I saw that correctly. And my friend Colin has definitely played against the Marincess deck before. Um, and that person they played against was me, primarily. So it's not like this is his first time seeing these cards. So definitely knows his way around the deck. For the most part. I don't want to give him too much credit. So we'll see him normal summon the Pascalis that will go through, bringing out Blue Tang. Blue Tang effect here is going to go ahead and dump Spring Girl, and we're going to see a Book of Eclipse go ahead and get activated here. Main deck to Book of Eclipse, not surprising. A lot of hate for Cash Jira in the main in forms of Nibiru and Book of Eclipse. And that is going to be a pretty good time to Book of Eclipse. Puts him on have another extender. The only extender in hand they could have would be like uh, exactly Spring Girl. Or exactly Dive, or Battle Ocean plus Dive, which, you know, unfortunate for our Sprite player, that's exactly what our Marincess player has. They do have the perfect follow-up here. 
So they're going to go ahead and activate Battle Ocean, and they are going to go ahead and slap down Dive as a result. Because you might as well go out here and go to summon from the deck. We know Smashers is still in the deck because it was revealed off that Prosperity, and he elected not to take it, so that other set I think is unknown. And we're going to see him go ahead and summon out Mandarin, of all things. And this is going to proc the effect of Sprind to detach from the set Gigantic. And bouncing back the Mandarin. Yeah, I'm not sure why you summon Mandarin there. I think you definitely just summon, like, Spring Girl. Because I always forget that Sprind has that other effect. But I feel like you summon Spring Girl because even if they bounce it... Right, you can just summon it from hand by banishing the other Spring Girl from Grave. It's definitely a losing position either way, no matter what you grab at this point, because they have, again, the Sprine Bounce, and they still have Nightmare Unicorn plays with the IP, which we're seeing now. And it's going to shuffle the Pascalis back into the deck. And end phase, he's just going to go ahead and let the Book of Eclipse fully resolve here. He'll get to go ahead and draw one card, since one monster of his own was flipped face up. And also at end phase... We're going to see a copy of Sprite Starter. And that's going to bring out Blue. Take 11. But before we can go ahead and resolve the effect of Blue, we are going to Game 2, guys. Reminder to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Would love to get to 30,000 subscribers this year. Definitely a big goal of mine. So if you want to get uh, notified and see you know, my content when it gets uploaded, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Would greatly uh, appreciate that. And also leave a like if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out the other ways you can support the channel down in the description below if you've already done both of those things. Which, uh, thank you if you already have. So we're going to see Marincess go first here in Game 2. They're going to go ahead and start by Normal Summoning Spring Girl and linking into Blue Slug. And they're just going to use the Spring Girl to add back the... Or the Blue Slug, rather, to add back the Spring Girl. Special Summon Seahorse from Hand of the Zone that Blue Slug points to. Link that off into Sea Angel. And they're just going to do Chain Link 1, Sea Angel, they don't have a Chain Link 2, just so CL1, Angel to add a spell. Now, I always try to Chain Block my Sea Angel when I play Marincess, just because Ash is still a hell of a card right now. Mainly because Brandon Fusion. And then we're going to see him resolve Desires, now that he's got the Battle Ocean out of the deck, most likely a one-of. But it also looks like that is not a one-of, because I did just see him banish a Battle Ocean, and I'm personally a fan of Double Battle Ocean, so I like to see that here in the list. And it looks like he drew a dive and a wave off of that. So it's nice to see that the wave is already out of the deck at this point, which you could argue maybe he could have waited um, to use the Pot of Desires until after he resolved the effect of Triangle. I think that would have been a little bit better. Definitely a little risky play there. Um, but it is what it is. It's kind of working out for him here. So we're going to see the dive bring out a Pascalis. That's going to bring out a Spring Girl from hand, allow him to get access to Bahamut Shark. Bahamut Shark effect attaching to go ahead and bring out Totally Awesome Link 2 into Anemone. Anemone effect targeting the Spring Girl in Grave. All while we still haven't used the effect of Spring Girl yet to go ahead and summon from Grave. We're going to link those both, Bahamut Shark and Spring Girl, into Marincess Crystal Heart. And this is what allows you to make your uh, Marincess monsters unaffected by your opponent's card effects by summoning a uh, Link monster in the EMZ using Marincess Crystal Heart's material, but it's only while the field spell is active. Um, that's what the field spell says. The field spell says anything Link summon using Marincess Crystal Heart, the Link 2 on the top left of his field in the spell and trap zone. That is the key, right? That is the piece of the puzzle that you need to be able to make that um unaffected monster so we're gonna see anima on an unaffected argonaut plus totally awesome and this is kind of scary um this is one thing i've been dealing with a lot lately is uh lava golem especially with playing photon like a, a deck that notoriously tends to end on two monsters at least two monsters and that's like when your worst end boards at least it's soul flare number 90 and you end up getting a lava golem dropped on you a lot of the times and that is scary um just because it wipes your whole field and this is the one thing I, I, I noticed about Marincess a lot too, is like anytime somebody was playing Lava Golem or Lava Golem or Kaijus were in the format, your end boards would just get absolutely deleted whether your stuff was unaffected or not. So I do see why some Marincess builds have moved away from the Ixies stuff, uh, mainly because it does play so hard into Lava Golem. Um, so we're going to see our sprite player turbo into the Mosquito here. And this is basically just a way to get into Zeus. And uh, it, it primarily goes off the fact that you know, I think when you, uh, you attack with it, like it can't be destroyed by battle or something. I don't remember the specifics. It's, it's like Sky Cavalry, I think. Like people are playing it in Sprite because uh, it has similar, um, 
applications like SkyCav uh, allows you to just like swing into something, right? It doesn't die, and you get to you know make a Zeus on top of it. So that is what he is trying to go for here. But the wave that was technically unknown in hand because that was drawn off the Pot of Desires is going to basically foil those plans and uh, will not get access to Zeus. So this um, Mosquito will die by battle here. And he'll take a decent amount of damage. I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure the exact effect of it, but I know it's basically just a uh, Zeus fodder, essentially. So now we're gonna see him in either the battle phase or main phase two. We're gonna activate starter. Argonaut is going to negate by bringing up the coral anemone. And that is going to be it. Sprite not having anything else to be able to get through that board. Just lucky he didn't have Lava Golem, which I know most Sprite builds don't play Lava Golem because they do need their normal summon, but it's just funny how fragile that end board can be. And I can't help but notice how sick that Baron to Floor mat is. I, I've been looking at it the whole time I've been editing it. That is a very cool OCG mat, and somebody's going to ask me, where did you get it? I don't know. If, uh, if you guys ever need to ask whose sleeves are what, or who's playing better or what? I know I'm going to mention this because I get comments like this all the time. I don't think it's a bad thing. It's just like a little much after a while. If the person, you know, the sleeves or the, the mat you're asking about is not my mat or sleeves, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, feel free to keep asking, I guess. I won't, I won't answer unless the person, the very specific person playing in the match happens to watch the video and sees your comment. I, I just think it's funny. Like people are always so curious about um, certain things and I get it right. That, that is a cool map. I imagine you probably only find something like that on eBay or in a Facebook group somewhere. And I just love Baron de Fleur. Will I get a CR1 from Maze of Memories? I don't know if I can afford it. I'd love to. So we're going to see him go into Sprind here. It is uh, protected by that Sprite Red. So he's kind of safe from Ash Blossom here. At least can play through an Ash Blossom if he cho chooses to do so. And we're going to see him go ahead and overlay into Gigantic. Gigantic effect will fully resolve here. No hand traps it looks like for our Rincess player. At least that I can see. We're going to see him go for Swap. Swap is going to dump another copy of itself. And Swap is going to bounce itself. And then we're going to see him link off Gigantic and Red and go for Bujinki Ahashima, which you cannot do because that's not how that works. So that is a bit of a misplay there because they have to be two monsters of the same levels and Gigantic, while it is a rank two, it is not a level two. So I don't think, and I'm going to double check the text, two monsters of the same level. Yeah, so could not have gone into the totally awesome there. And we're going to see him activate Pot of Prosperity to follow up. So yeah, I don't know if there's another way he could have done that. Right? I think he would have needed access to another body somehow. Maybe another sprite name on field. But yeah, I don't... Um, at least I'm like 99% sure he couldn't have done that. Unfortunate. Yeah, because if, if he would have committed to that line thinking that he could have done it and got, you know, the opponent actually catches it as he resolves that pot of prosperity for six, might take Nibiru. N Nibiru is notoriously good against Amurincess. I'm not sure what else he took there. Might have been Smashers or Triple Tactics, it looks like. He's going to look at the hand. Two copies of Seahorse, Ash, and a Kestir Fenrir. I think it's pretty obvious to take the Fenrir out as that will apply the most pressure to engine cards like Seahorse. Very... Very good and efficient engine cards as they are both one card combos, but uh, seeing them both together and on their own going to a board is not really going to accomplish much. But yeah, if he committed to that line there and, you know, the other player would caught it, that, he, that he, uh, Hashima does not work that way. They have to be two monsters with levels, not ranks. Um, so yeah, that's unfortunate, but we're going to see these uh, the totally awesome attempt to activate in the standby phase. It's going to get hit with that Ash that he knew was in hand. Sign Up Mining is the top deck. Sign Up Mining is going to discard... The Seahorse attempt to search. It's going to get negated by Toad. Toad will set the sign at. Normal summon Seahorse. Activate Smashers. And that's a GG. So, yeah. 
Maybe things could have gone a different way there for our sprite player. Maybe not. Who knows? That is going to do it, though. Thank you guys for watching. Last but not least, a huge shout out goes to our Divine Level channel members who are Misfit, HD at Cyber, Cadillacs 84, and Pony Stark. Thank you guys so much, as always, for extremely kind and very generous support of this channel.